morning, folks. I am Fishman2114, and today we're going to do a bit of a different video. We are actually going to go down and do some bullhead fishing. So, I think without further ado, let's go down to the pond. I'll see you guys down there. Right. we just made it to the pond. It's a very small spot, but man, does it hold some big bullhead. So, let's come down here. Ugh. Just driving this rhino down here. It's a lot easier than walking down here with all my gear, even with my backpack, because I got four poles ready this morning. Let me get one of them thrown in there, and I'll show you what I'm using. So, this is my first pole. I like to call it the garage sale pole because I actually bought it at a garage sale for only $5, but it's a really nice pole. It's in, let's see if I can get it focused. It's an FX2602A and it has really nice action. It's, it's a really nice rod. The, the reel isn't as nice. It's quantum. It's a snapshot. It's not as nice. It's pretty old as you can tell. It's, it's a pretty old pole, but it's definitely done the trick well. So I'm going to get some bread on this, and I'll show you about where I'm casting. So as mentioned, we're using bread for bait. Really, any bread will do because you got to form it into a dough ball. But this Italian bread right here, I feel, works best and stays on the longest. So give it a shot if you haven't already. All right, we got our bread ready. Make sure that it's a really nice and snug dough ball. Bread is obviously pretty soft, and it's not the most durable bait. So the more you pat it down, the more it holds up for you. And be sure to leave that part of the hook going. So let's get this tossed. So I've tried tossing this thing in the water in multiple different parts. Further out and closer in, I find right in the middle works typically the best so let's get this thing cast it out and let's that is a perfect spot right there let me get this thing tightened up you don't want this line all loose you want to make sure it's nice and tight so you can tell there's a fish right away all right just like that the line is perfectly tight and ready to tell if a fish is biting. Now, I put my poles, <laughs> balance them in the rhino. Obviously, even a stick or especially some kind of pole holder would be a lot easier, but I don't have one of those quite yet. I mean, I could go find a stick, but the rhino works well enough for this. So you have a rod holder, it's 10 times easier. That is the next purchase I plan to make. So let's get the other one set up. For the next pole, this is a pole I actually received as a gift. It's an ugly stick. It's an old ugly stick. It's called a Shakespeare ugly stick. It's a lot larger than the other one. It's quite a big, heavy pole. And it may be old, but it works pretty well. The reel, as you can tell, the reel's a bit worn down. I think it's also a Shakespeare. I really, it's hard to tell what this reel is, but... It does the trick. I have some newer and nicer poles, but these old ones, for what I use them for, they do the trick. So with this one, we're gonna do the same thing. So I'll see you when I get the bread on. I realized I forgot to go quickly over the setup on these poles. So on that pole, it's all 20 pound line. And on this one, we have eight pound here. We have this nice flat weight. These work really well for rivers. I use this for when I'm going for channel catfish. It's two ounce. As you can tell, it's quite hefty. It really gets down there. It's a bit overkill for this pond, but it works nonetheless. I have a swivel underneath it with 20 pound, a 20 pound leader on it, quite a large one, and then a little circle hook. Quite small. You don't want a large one, otherwise they will notice it. So now let's get the bread on for real. <laughs> All right, just like that, we got our dough ball on and we are ready to get our second pole out there. So 
this one, while the other pole is over there, I probably want this one to be more in this direction. So. That one's going to be a bit further out there, but that is perfectly fine with me. Let's get this one balanced and set up on the rhino. All right, there we go. This one is balanced way up there. So as you can tell, it's a lot taller than that one. Nevertheless, the line is nice and tight, and we are ready to just wait. Now, you could just wait for a bite, but there are black, crappy, and largemouth bass in here. So I think while we wait for a nibble on the bullhead... I'm going to cast my little micro pole. It's a not, this is a really nice ugly stick, the GX2. Very much smaller pole than the other one, as you can tell. And we're going to throw this little fire tiger crankbait around. I find this color really does well for mimicking a perch while still being very bright. It's my favorite color of crankbaits to fish with. So... We'll cast it around and see what we get. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes since these bullhead poles have been in the water. I think I might switch up tactics slightly. So let's take them out and make sure that the bait is still on them. Because I may have seen this one getting picked. That is a thing that happens with bread. Is that little fish, like bluegills and pumpkin seed, crappie, whatever, can pick off your bread. So you definitely want to be careful of that and not have your pole sitting in there for hours and hours just for it to have been picked. So I'm going to reel these up, make sure there's bread on it, recast them. All right, so both of them actually had the bread on them. What I did with this one is I casted it out a tiny bit further, getting it more in the middle of the pond. Hopefully that does the trick. What I'm also going to do, and you sure don't have to do this, but I do like to do this when I'm not getting much action, is I like to make a little smaller bread ball and throw it around my bait. Now, I definitely don't like to overdo this because then the fish just focus on the, the fake bait that you used. But I think I find it helps bring them in and it helps them stay longer. It also helps them feel more comfortable about the bread that you threw. Now, make sure with these that they're not floating because then the bullfish or the, the bullhead will come up and they won't be anywhere near your bread that's at the bottom if it's floating on top. So make sure it's down at there around your bait. You do all various sizes, as I see. I think it helps slightly, you know, get some more used to different sizes of bread. As you can see, it has some larger ones and it has some really tiny ones. But I think right there should do it. I'm going to scoop it up and I like to throw it around the bait. Not too many uh, around each, but I think three or four around each line helps to draw them in. So hopefully the strategy works. All right, so it's been kind of a slow morning. I'm actually going to switch this guy out. He hasn't gotten me anything. I'm thinking about doing a really small spinner that mimics a little flying insect that got into the water to try to catch some of these crappie. Let's see. Um, well, maybe we'll just go with this spinner, actually. Try this one out, this little white one. All right, we got that little spinner on there. I wish it had a golden little spinner because this water is pretty murky. 
but I still think I have faith in it. I like to use these uh, clip swivels when I'm using inline spinners because it prevents the line from getting tangled up. See, the spinners kind of twist and turn a lot, so in turn, your line can get tangled up as it's flipping over itself. The spinner prevents that, so I like to use it. All right, let's get this in there. All right, guys, we got the first fish of the morning. I was right about that little spinner. This guy absolutely took it. Let's get it out of its mouth and I'll give you a closer look. All right, we got the first fish of the morning. Look at this guy, beautiful little fish. I think we will put him back. He's a nice solid two pounds. That is a good start to the morning. And we're definitely gonna keep using that spinner bait. Let me tell you that. All right. Oh, wow, that guy wanted to go back. Let's get another one. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes since I caught that bass. I've been just going along this edge and nothing on the bullhead lines. So what I think I'm gonna do is reel them in, drive the rhino forward and try maybe more in this shallower area see if that's where they're going at because i have not gotten a bite yet and this is very unusual so i'll see you guys when i get all set up there all right so we got both of our rods set up this one is way way out in that area and then this one is kind of doing the same tactic as we did before it's out right about there so with this method, I'm trying to cover more ground. I mean, it's the same method, but I'm trying to cover more ground. That one's going to be out further. This one's going to be closer in. I'll throw some bread for the one that's closer in. The one out there, there's no way I'm going to be able to get the bread. But as you can tell, we moved a pretty good amount. We were right about there. So we moved just over here. Hopefully, that's enough of a move where... We get kind of in this coastal area, and yeah, hopefully they actually start biting. Now, it's, this, is very, this has been a very interesting morning because most of the time that I've done this here, I've been doing this to make sure that it's actually an efficient method, which it is, which is hence why I'm making the video about it. But most mornings, the first bite actually comes very early on. It normally happens on the smaller one. This is the one I typically set up first. And there's been some mornings where I haven't even been able to set this pole ready to go before I've already got a fish on. So for it to be over an hour with no fish is definitely a bit disappointing, but we're gonna power through and hopefully get a nice big bullhead. I've also just changed out that spinner for this little crayfish crankbait i don't actually know what color it is it's very bright though it's that bright orange belly bit of brown on the top and yellow at the side i find that this guy works really well i haven't used him extensively here he's been hit a couple times here but i've never pulled in a fish with him so i think we changed that today let's get him in there all right you guys we got a fish on here see that movement that's what you're looking for all right, you guys, the first bullhead of the morning. Pretty nice one, as you can see. Nice belly on it. Let me get the hook out of his mouth, and I'll give you guys a closer look. Finally got one. Patience does pay off, folks. All right, you guys. This is what we ended up with. Pretty decent fish. I mean, nice belly, good size. That's a nice bullhead right there. I'm using these fish grass just because, for one, it's a lot easier to show you, but... I'm also trying to avoid those teeth in there. If you can see them, they have made me bleed before. So normally I would hold it by hand, but because I'm holding a camera, we are using the grasps. I'm gonna put him back. And there he goes, just like that. First bullhead of the day, okay. I'm feeling good. I was worried that this bullhead video was gonna have no bullhead in it, but. We got one. 
Now, these are all brown bowl head, by the way. Uh, so, let's go get another one. So the crayfish didn't do it for me, unfortunately. I didn't get a single strike on it. So we're going to put the micro pole away and take out the larger pole I have. This is actually the same pole. It's the GX2, just larger. But I'm going to throw around this peanut butter and jelly crayfish around. And hopefully we're going to bounce it off the bottom, see if any bass want to take it. All right, you guys, I just had two misses in a row. So with that bass jig, one of them took it. He was taking it halfway across the pond. And I absolutely cranked it in his mouth, but he jumped it right off. He was, he was almost to the shore, too. And then shortly after that, there was some action on my bullhead rod. And I came too late. Since I was fighting that bass, the bullhead actually came off by the time I got to it. So, two misses in a row, a bass and a bullhead. Well, there's no point of complaining about it. We might as well get our stuff back out there and try again. So, I'll see you next fish. All right, and we're back. It's actually a couple hours later in the day. I... After that, I fished about 30, 40 minutes after those last two misses and didn't get any more action. So, went home for a bit and got some food, got some sunscreen. It's a lot hotter out today. Got some water. We're going to see if we can get any more bullhead in. All right, guys, I didn't get it on camera, but we have another bullhead. Casted it out in the middle of the pond. And this one's probably, probably bigger than the last one. A bit torn up in the fin, actually, but beautiful fish. I think we'll let him go. Mm. And there he goes. All right, let's get another one. All right, guys, we just pulled up another one. In fact, this one, I thought a smaller fish took it because I just felt a little doop. And then nothing else happened. So I thought a small fish took it. This guy, I wish I had a, a GoPro on my forehead because this guy jumped out of the water like a bass. This guy. That's a nice bullhead nice belly this one's nice and big this like if you want to eat them i fish for sport so i don't eat them but this would this would definitely be an eating fish wow that guy put up a fight and there he goes yeah that's really funny i absolutely thought a small little bluegill took my bait nope he just, just, he was just chewing it, I guess. Well, look what I just pulled up, guys. I'm using bread on a bobber and pulled up a pretty nice bluegill. Let's get a closer look. It's a pretty nice fish. I got a little bored of waiting for the bullhead, so. Got a little bluegill instead. Pretty color. All right, see you, buddy. I bet you we'll get another one real quick. This one's a bit smaller, but it's definitely brighter than the last one. So we'll let them right back in there. All right. Probably will take another two seconds before we get another one. And another bluegill. All right. So this was a bit unexpected. I was just trying to get some bluegill and we ended up full on catching a, a bullhead. Same method with the bobber and this really nice bullhead came along. I think that's number four for today. 
So, wow, that's a bit of a different technique, but hey, it works. It works. Look at that guy. This is one of the best ones of the day. This might be the best one yet. I caught it on my ultralight. All right. That was a lot of fun. Let's get another one. All right, so we have another bullhead on the line, but you can't tell it right now. This guy ate both of my lines. He took that one, was at the edge of his mouth, and then he swallowed this one real bad. So I'm gonna get it out and give you a closer look at him. All right, so this is that bullhead we caught. Not as big as some of the other ones, but still. You know, it's a pretty nice boy. That's still an edible bullhead right there. So we'll let him go. Oh, you can see the other line that he ate. He ate both of them at once. That's a first for me. So there he goes. And just like that, we just pulled up another fish. This one's a nice bullhead. This one's pretty nice. That one also swallowed the hook. So I'll get it out of there. I think I caught this one earlier. Is that the same one? I caught this one this morning, actually. Remember the one with the ripped up fin? Well, he came back. All right, well, I'll get it out of him and we'll let him go for the second time. All right, we'll let this guy go again. Caught the same bullhead. This is a nice fish though, beautiful fish. Ripped up in the fins, that's how I could tell. It was the same one. But he'll be off on his way again. And there he goes. What the heck? I just accidentally caught a tadpole. Well, we'll let you go too, buddy. See you later. All right, so that'll wrap this video up. In the end, we got a bass, three bluegill, and we ended up with five different bullheads. One of them we caught twice. So for this small pond, I do recommend using bread to get these guys. Of course, you will end up with a couple bluegill, especially if you're using floating, but I think it's just, it's a lot of fun and it's an effective way to fish. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see more fishing videos, if you wanna see challenges, I do have a couple ideas. As you can tell, it's pretty hot out here, so I'm gonna get some water and get in the AC. I'll catch you guys later.